Ladies and gentlemen of the interwebs, I present to you the legend of Noboru. Noboru began playing this game in 2007, according to his profile. And when I first heard of him, it was years back when I first entered the community. There were not many YouTubers, there were not many streamers, and he would play 1v1 Nomad. In his 1v1 Nomad games, he was notorious for making things messy, for vil fighting, for towering, and just being overall very annoying. And after all these years of playing, he finally becomes a legend. He is in the blue, and he is the one that started this whole tower vil rush shenanigans recently. I'm sure you've seen uploads of it, and I'm sure it happened before Noboru did it, but he does it every game. And he's very, very good player, very high rating, and right now I just checked, he's in the top 200 in the world. Always hosts 1v1 Arabia, always says it is hidden civilization pick, and he picks Incas. Every time. Inca villagers are affected by blacksmith upgrades, and he goes in aggressively. Now, recently I uploaded a video, it was the uh, most annoying strategy series. I recommend checking that out, that will be in the video description if you haven't seen it. Uh, if you haven't seen it, you, it's basically the same thing. <laughs> We're just going to highlight more Noboru strategies, because he deserves a legend video. But, uh, check that out if you haven't, there's obviously other annoying strategies there as well. Uh, I'm excited, I'm going to show you three games, all different styles. Uh, sorry, the opponents will use different styles against him every time. So just one thing to get out of the way, I'm going to speed it up through Dark Age. He always goes to Feudal really quickly. Uh, he's in the blue, he's playing as the Incas, and then we have Pela, who is a strong 2k player from Argentina. He's playing as the Mayans, which he chose, by the way. Um, I'm experimenting with quality options for these YouTube-only recordings, and I'd just like your feedback on that, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, this will be uploaded after the Viper Obsidian Arrows, and I use two different presets to record it. So if you see a difference, please make sure to let me know. I just wanted to get that out there before I forgot. So, Noboru, he likes lame, he likes aggression, he likes to make your life a living hell. And Pela also chose a Mesosiv. And one of the big bonuses with Mesosivs is that their eagles have high attack in Dark Age and also a lot of line of sight. So it's one of the best lame laming civilizations. And Pela has just stolen two sheep from Noboru. So... Uh, not only that, but Noboru's villager is getting attacked. So, I believe <laughs> Noboru's reputation is catching up to him here. And Pela is being just as aggressive as he can, or as aggressive as possible. Um, normally, that really hurts to lose two sheep if you're trying to go man-at-arms. But Noboru, he doesn't save wood for a barracks. He doesn't go for much of that. Normally, what he's doing is he's going for like a 20 population build. Um... And I guess the best way to explain it to someone who might be new to all this, and wow, Pele is really laming him, uh, is that with the Man at Arms build, you need to save resources for a barracks. So normally, instead of having villagers on berries and food, you have a few excess on wood and stuff, uh, and then gold. He won't have that, so I think he'll be fine. Uh, we'll get his two sheep in, we'll get his pig in, and it will be quite a huge help to have more HP on his eagle when he ends up going forward. Now, what's crazy about Noboru's strategy is that he hasn't deviated from it in months, and he does the same thing every time. People expect it, and he's still getting victories. Now, Mayans is a very solid pick. I would rate it above Incas on the ladder, as with most pros. Uh, Mayans have a better economy, because their resources last 10% longer. They have better Eagle Warriors in the Imperial Age with full upgrades once they get El Dorado. Uh, there's a lot of bonuses that go Mayans' way, but... <clears throat> <laughs> the one thing that all Sifts seem to struggle with is is dealing with the Inca Vil Rush and Tower Rush. Now, Pela, he, he's had a messy start here. He's beginning to wall because he's expecting the aggression. And he got housed for a moment there, so that does set him back a little bit. But there's the barracks. This is what you would expect if he's going for Man at Arms. And Nobaru will be going forward. <laughs> now, this is not a promise, YouTube, because I can't. I can't guarantee that I'm going to see him online, but let me know in the comments if you would like me to face off against Noboru at some point in the near future. Uh, as much as I would not like to die <laughs> in front of tens of thousands of people on YouTube, I do what I do for your entertainment. So, 
I, I will try and face him if you guys would like to see that. I have about the same rating as him right now, to be honest, so might as well donate him some points. That's fine. Like one of the things I hate facing up against is aggressive strategies like this. I hate towers, so playing Noboru would be a nightmare for me, but the views on the video would be the opposite. I think I would like the views on the video, so. Anyways, Noboru will be in the feudal age faster, uh, and he has a lot of vills on stone right now. So we know Inca villagers are affected by blacksmith upgrades, which is what makes this strategy possible, and then also stone buildings are cheaper for them. So this is really fascinating. He has so many villagers on stone. But what he's about to do here is another uncommon thing you won't see pros do. First off, he built four farms in Dark Age. Most pros, they won't build a lot of farms in Dark Age. See this? Pela, he's hoping to build farms after he gets Horse Collar in Feudal Age, which means that he'll have more food in the long run. I guess when you're looking to kill someone within 15 minutes, you don't really need food in the long run. So four farms in Dark Age is a commitment for Noboru. And I guess when you have cheap towers and you're, you're trying to kill someone quickly, as I just said, building a mining camp to collect stone and then completely abandoning the mining camp is the way to go. This is very uncommon. Now, Red hurt himself earlier uh, by losing his eagle. He might have attacked some things, might have been annoying, but he lost HP on the eagle, sorry. And he's going for Man at Arms, which I still think is the best strategy against this. Shot it. Now, there are, uh, I'm using normal game to, to cast this. There are 11 units forward for Noboru. He has 24 units on the map. 11 of them are going forward, and he's getting scale mail armor. So this is the strat. His villagers will have armor. Red will have three man-at-arms and his own villagers. You have to fight with your own villagers with the man-at-arms. Otherwise, you're heavily outnumbered. So he goes in for the fight, and the start of this fight is great. If that was a villager without armor, it would have died. It's so annoying to micro villagers. So Noboru sends forward a few more. <laughs> We're 12 minutes in the game. He sends more villagers forward. He saves the weak one. And Red's like, oh shit. <laughs> what do I do? Now, both players are losing units right now. It is not uncommon for Noboru to fall behind. It's a risky strategy, it's an all-in strategy, but he tends to just win with sheer numbers and determination. And Pela realizes he needs to get out of here. So he lost two men-at-arms, I believe he lost a villager as well, I can't count, alright? Just, just don't judge me. And he will lose this dude, doink! He's dead. So now what's he making? Uh, he, he has an archer range, so he could make some archers. His eco's all out of whack, actually, because he's been so focused on microing these vills. Oh, and he decides to send more villagers out! Now, this is a deadly mistake. Noburu is placing a tower. Red, he has two weak villagers in here. And if this tower goes up, the villagers will get shredded by the tower fire. And he doesn't have the armor upgrades that Noburu has. So it makes players freak out even when they're expecting it. The last thing that Pela wants to do is lose that stone, but he's losing too many units now. This is unreal. The attack upgrade came in a few minutes ago, so the villagers also have the attack. Red is, is running all around, and once the tower's up, he either runs back to his TC and takes some arrows to the back, or he just resigns. So, again, I will be casting many games, but that is a perfect example of what Noboru's games look like. This is what he does all the time. <laughs> this is what he enjoys. Uh, by the way, if my memory serves me correctly, Red did not play him again, and there was no GG, so I can't be very satisfied with how that went down. So, we go into the recorded games. Please do not stalk my files, okay? Yeah, don't castle face ouchy. That's, that's not good. Uh, we go to... Sorry, I was looking at a bunch of games. I believe this is the one I wanted to go to next. Yes, this is the one I wanted to go to next. Another great display of what Nobru can do to players, and this time a higher rated player in Project Belgium. Now, to give you an idea of how good Project Belgium is, Project Belgium played in King of the Desert 2, which means he made it into the top 32 in the world at that time. So Nobaru is within the top few hundred, but top 32 in the world, Project Belgium, when he's in top form. 
And Project Belgium knows his reputation. He's very active. You can see the rating difference at the bottom left. Huge, huge skill difference. Project Belgium chose Mongols, and Noboru went for his Incas, of course. Um, you know what? Since we know what's going to happen, I'm going to speed through the beginning stages of this game so we can get to the juicy stuff. But I've seen a lot of players choose Mongols. I think the idea with Mongols is since you have that hunt bonus, you can get to Feudal Age well before Noboru arrives. It's it's an interesting uh, interesting logic. It's tough because you can't you can't run away from his vills when they're fighting you. You can't avoid them because then he'll place towers. Let's say uh, let's say Project Belgium had four scouts here, okay? And Noburu comes forward with 10 villagers. If, if Belgium realizes, oh shoot, I can't fight those villagers, he almost has to fight for the position. Because if he runs back, Noburu places a tower and denies the woodlines and the berries. So I think that's the big concern with it, and I think that's why it works. He either forces you into a fight that you do not want to take, or he takes your map control away from you with the cheap towers. But it's such an all-in strat, and it's it's just working. It's working against far too many people, and players who are much, much better than him at playing standard. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this one was because Project Belgium is a much better player, but also because Project Belgium attempts a different strategy. He, he doesn't try and fight Noboru in early feudal like all the other players. Instead, he tries something different. He has that Mongol scouting bonus, so he finds Noboru's base. Look at this lumber eco, man. <laughs> Unreal. Just two on wood. That's all Noboru needs. Chop in the far tree, whatever. Yeah, and there should be no surprises here. But at least now Project Belgium knows where the pressure is coming from. Uh, if he felt like Noboru was on this side, I think that's more dangerous because this stone's there. This hill is there. This area of his base is not all that important to him, except for the wood. It, he He's walling up right now, and he's going to attempt to be very greedy and go with a fast castle. And it's a difficult strat to justify when your wood's forward and can be towered. But he's walling early. Uh, Noburu is looking for him at the moment. Noburu has not found him yet. Noburu has found this neutral gold in the relic, so he knows that Project Belgium is probably to the left, and he'd be spot on with that. But I found this attempt really interesting. Because with your, with your safe stone and your safe gold, if you wall really early, and you have a, a fast, fast castle time with the Mongol hunt, it's, it's a possibility. And then once you make a few knights, there's no way Noburu can fight that. I don't care how many upgrades he has on the bills. If he's in Feudal Age, two or three knights would destroy him and the game would be over. So... What's Noburu's reaction to the walls? He shows up. Now, seeing just one layer of wall is not too unheard of. And Project Belgium could be doing that if he's going to Feudal Age. He sees the TC uh, and dodges the TC fire, so that's good. Only took us, uh, lost 6 HP. And at home, he's sticking to his game plan. He's lacking one food to click up. He needs to drop that off, and there he goes on his way to Feudal Age. So I think the key areas would be wood, berries, stone, and gold. <laughs> I guess everything. And farm space can be helpful sometimes. But he probably realizes now that Project Belgium has walled him out of this space. Now, normally what Noburu tends to get is the armor upgrade. Uh, I think here it might be better to get the attack so you could break through the walls faster. But Project Belgium fully expected this. I like how he has the deer there. He walled that deer in. And Project Belgium will get Loom, and he will be on his way to Feudal Age soon. So that'll put him about a minute and a half, two minutes behind Noburu. Meaning, he won't have military to defend unless he uses his villagers. And, more importantly, he cannot build counter towers. I think that's the big thing. Oh, sorry, he's creating more villagers. I was, I was just going to say that clicking up now... With 25 pop would make Fast Castle very, very tight and difficult to pull off. Now, if the Inca player reaches Feudal Age faster than the Mongol player, that's a sign that the Mongol player is definitely going for a Fast Castle. 
Uh, it's uncommon for this to happen. And here come the villagers, <laughs> right? So no surprise, we saw it before, everyone expects it. And he's getting fletching first, so he's able to adapt. He realizes he needs the towers to have some more range, and then maybe he can worry about the villager upgrades once he's through. Now, I had already mentioned getting the forging upgrade so he could batter his way through, but he realizes that Project Belgium could wall behind, so he's gone for fletching first. That will give his towers one more range and some more attack. And this is precisely what Belgium's going to do. Belgium will place a wall here. That's actually to prevent a tower hop. That's a glitch that Nobru could have gone for. And now that the tower has fletching, could really deal some damage to this villager, so the villager has to run away carefully. Good first tower for Nobaru. Belgium is halfway to feudal age. Now I talk at I talk about this all the time in my cast. While Project Belgium's strategy choice is different, and I can kind of see what he's thinking, I'm never a fan of giving up map control versus a civilization or a style which is meant to take map control. Um, so you're seeing now the weakness of this fast castle strat because he has no way of defending right now. But I think what he's hoping to do is place his own tower on this hill, like wall, wall the villas out for now, place his own tower on this hill, and then click up to Castle Age, make a few knights and win the game. That's probably the logic. So for Nobru, he needs to push through quickly. He researched scale mail armor. He's running up the hill. <laughs> and he's thinking, hmm, where should I tower? And there's the defensive tower for Belgium. Nobru decides to fight. So Nobru has nine villagers with the armor. No attack yet. Oh no, he does have the attack. I lied. So full upgrades on the vills. The HP for Project Belgium's villagers is not looking too hot. He lost one, some are weak, but he garrisons his tower. Now normally this would be perfect. Normally you'd have Nobaru right where you want him, but Nobaru has the vill upgrades. So check this out. Look how long it takes that villager to die. The villager dies, but Nobaru has killed the tower. Project Belgium can't afford any more towers, so he has to, to, to uh, grab the boxing gloves and fight Nobaru. He does have more villagers, though. This is just not pretty, is it? Oh my goodness. One would think that Project Belgium will take the build lead because of the numbers. Yeah, and he is getting some good kills. Also, the fact that Nobaru's trapped is kind of bad for him. And Project Belgium is making scouts. So, after all of this, I think Belgium's response pretty solid. Keep an eye on that vill count at the bottom left. Nobru will lose all of these vills. He won't have any towers up on the gold. Project Belgium will find some more places for wood. And that gives Project Belgium a six villager lead. Uh, hold on. Oh my god. Whoa, how did that... <laughs> that was weird. Did that... Did that, uh... Eagle Warrior get some extra range? My goodness. I'm not sure how Belgium lost that vill, but... Anyways, he will wall this up, I assume. Yeah. He'll kill the eagle, wall it up. This this dude's still running around. So Belgium's chasing that. And Belgium has 600 food, 360 gold, and he figures, I'm good. I'm good. Um, spoiler alert, he's not good. Because Nobaru is coming back forward with two groups. You can tell some of them were farmers, some of them were foragers. He realizes he's behind, so he's going back in for more. And pro players just don't do this. Like, normally, pro players would say, oh shoot, I lost villagers. Now I need to focus on economy because less villagers means less economy. I need ultra focus on eco. No! He comes forward. Belgium is being greedy McGreed greed, trying to go castle. He figures he could do so safely. What was that noise? Oh, this random box I had in my apartment fell. I'm sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. I thought I had a, a murderer on the loose in here. Um, Belgium now can't chop wood comfortably. So he's on his way to Castle Age. He can't take this wood line. He can't take this wood line. He can't take this. Can't take this. I'm not sure if he scouted this. He, he has. He doesn't have the wood to build a lumber camp over there yet. And he had to purchase the gold to build a defensive tower. So, so far, it's risky. 
but it can work for Belgium if he gets a few knights out. I've already mentioned this, but he's giving up map control. And Nobaru is diving in. He's diving in for the gold. He's diving in for the tower. Has this tower up, which will range any villagers that Belgium might use to defend himself there. And this tower will go up to kill the farmers, which are both weak. And I can't show this all on the screen, but villagers will start dropping left and right for Belgium. Yep, there we go. There's all the right villagers. The tower goes down. And now on the left, look at how weak these vills are. Look at this economy. And Belgium just resigns. He went for the greedy play, which in hindsight was really dumb. And he loses. So Nobaru got, what, 25 points from that win? And he just went into the next one. And this game wasn't the next one, but this was the best from the bunch that I found. Uh, with the exception of one game I don't want to talk about yet, because I want you to wait till the end to hear about it. The next game Nobaru played against another fantastic player who is better than him in terms of rating. And here it is. Nobaru chose Incas again. Surprise, surprise. Hold on, I need to reload this. It should give me the overlay. Perfect. Yeah, Incas again. Surprise, surprise for the legend. And we have Bru, uh, who is another player who's been playing a long time. And he loves his Hun Wars. Uh, Bru was near 2k2. Nobaru was near 2k1 at this point, but again, a higher rated player. And Bro didn't have the best start, but immediately adapted by pushing in deer. He didn't find his four sheep yet. So, in the first game, Pela tried to go all in feudal. Uh, he struggled, and he resigned with no GG. <laughs> in the second game I showed you, Belgium... He tried to go uh, the opposite. He, he tried a fast castle, and he struggled, and there was no GG. In this game, Bro is, is going to go for a wiser attempt at fighting him back in Feudal Age, and this was definitely one of the more competitive games I found against Nobaru, uh, and you'll get to see just how, how much of a struggle it can be to kill Nobaru, even if you take a bit of a lead. Um, this build order... It was all about adapting for, for Bro. He collected uh, most of his deer first, hasn't taken a single sheep, and now is going to wood. That's interesting. That He's going to be able to get a really strong feudal age time off of that. Now, the maps are atrocious for both. I think, at first glance, this is much better for Bro though. Uh, that's the other thing about Nobaru. He tends to play in a classic Arabia. Uh, oftentimes, there's water in the wood, and it makes it easier for aggression. Only this time, this crappy Arabia hurts him, because if Bro ever gets to his base, look how exposed this is. So I guess it's fine. If if you know, uh, if you're fighting with your economy, there's not much at your base for them to kill anyway. <laughs> now, I once played a game versus Nobru. I forgot about this. Now, this is before the whole, um, the whole Inca shenanigans. This was probably over a year ago. It was 1v1 Arabia. And he had Mongols, I believe. He stole four of my sheep and a boar in Dark Age. And I got salty and complained about it. And I said, really? Question mark. And he said, I MBL fan. <laughs> and that didn't make me laugh as much as it does now, let me tell you. And then the next game, I was like kind of tilted. So I went into it thinking I was going to lame him. And I got really fortunate. And I was able to steal uh, the same amount, actually, it, except I took it to the next level. I stole a boar, I stole four sheep, and then I sent a villager forward to shoot all of his deer. I was super salty. And then I ended up full-on crushing him and winning. Uh, but the difference, uh, the hilarious thing about it was, Nobaru didn't get salty at all. He just typed 11 and said, Re, do you want to play again? It didn't affect him mentally, but for me, I was like, ah, oh, ah, oh, how dare you, you know. Nobaru plays by different rules. Uh, that game is so long ago, I probably can't show it to you, but if I do play him, and you guys want to see it, I'll upload it to YouTube. I'll upload my demise to YouTube, because I'm... I'm not sure how to counter this yet. I A lot of players are choosing Incas and just mirroring the strategy. That's what the most successful attempts have been. Just picking Incas and doing the same thing. That or going with five man-at-arms and killing him in early feudal. 
Another thing, and I won't highlight it in this episode, another thing that he's been doing in recent games, games that he played this week, uh, he picks Incas, and then he goes for a normal strategy. <laughs> Everyone goes crazy trying to stop a forward, and he just goes with man-at-arms, like normal stuff. So, it's interesting the way he uses Incas. And he's on his way to Feudal. So this is the best game of the bunch. The best game of the Legend video. Bruh has gone up super early expecting this. 19 population scouts. It's because he pushed in all the deer. He has all this remaining sheep, so he can afford to get the scouts out nice and early. Bruh also has played this really smart. He's scout... well... Sorry, um, I thought that he had scouted everything because he had a scout around, but I he knows where Noboru is, so. He know Baru's. He know Baru? No bro. Yeah, whatever. Uh, sorry, I had to get one bad joke in here. So the key for him is going to be massing scouts, getting farms out. The more food you get, the more scouts you can make. Maybe scouts with upgrades, scouts with forging. All those things can be very good for him. But he'll have his stable up before Noburu even gets to Feudal Age. This is why players choose Mongols. Because the idea is to get to Feudal as quick as possible. And Bro has just done a similar thing with Huns. And look! He scouts it! So he says, ah! He sees the Vils. He's with these villagers every step of the way. Noburu has, what does this end up being, uh, 11 villagers forward. Sorry, I'm not using Capture Age for these games because it's it's tough to go um, from, from wreck to wreck with Capture Age without it looking bad, so... I need to act like I'm professional, is what I'm saying. Uh, 12th villager was coming forward. Nobru decided 11 will be okay with his eagle. And the armor upgrade is completed. So, bro, is making everything he can. He has two villagers, he built an outpost. He has three scouts, he has two spears, he's sending three more villagers. So that's that's 11 versus 10 units. Noburu sees this, he's also running up the hill, so he'd take more damage. So he leaves the hill, is now researching forging. Bro has played this near perfectly so far. He scouted it, he uh, has the hill, he has the scouts. And also, Noburu's fighting with Vils, so it takes a lot of clicks, whereas Bro can hit and run. Like, a few hits here. He... It doesn't kill a villager. No, he does kill a villager, and then he runs. More scouts come in to reinforce. Uh, since I'm not using Capture Rage, I'll just stay on Noburu's villagers to show you just how much damage Bro is doing at the moment. And this is also the second wolf that has attacked Noburu, which is unfortunate. Because that's not helping things. In fact, that guy's going to die. So if you think about it, both both players have villagers running around and around and around, but Noburu has most of his economy forward. And Bru has sniped another villager. And Bru is making this look very easy to defend. And when I have a moment, is the wolf attacking Noburu again? It is, I think. Anyways, when I have a moment, I'm going to go to Bru's base. He still has sheep left. He still has the food eco to make scouts. Now he has tons of wood. Normally you'd use that wood to make farms, but he's so busy microing right now. He has to win these fights, otherwise the towers will go up. Now funny enough, after all of this, it's 23 bills versus 23 bills. And I felt like for a while there that bro was taking the fights more effectively. Now he's left with one weak scout, and that guy's dead. And the three villagers that bro has remaining... They probably need to get out of here. Hold on, there is a weak one, though. Um, doink! She, wait, <laughs> that, that was Brosville? Uh, get her! Come on, bro! Doink! She's dead, there we go. Vil for Vil, lady for lady. Noboru's coming back with more! This guy is a freaking legend, guys! He is a legend! <laughs> he won the initial battle! Kind of, he's still down in Vils, but he's coming forward with more Vils, and he's also researching Wheelbarrow, which is make his villagers slightly faster, which is hilarious. Now, Bro is probably starting to freak out, because he knows the towers are coming. And you can see he just added a bunch of farms. 
It's almost like, impossible to micro scouts and vills versus no brewers, vills, and add farms, though. That's the thing. So it kind of nerfs the scout strategy to be so aggressive. Because human beings can only do so much. I really want to see high level players try this. Like, high level players play Nobaru. Like, a best of seven and see what it's like. Because, my goodness, Bro played this good, but now he's beginning to lose some control over the game. A uh, big thing here is he loses his wood line and he loses the hill. He's trying to stop this tower. Three scouts and his own villagers. No brew, it's just villagers. No brew lost a stone. No brew would just place another tower. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, that villager survives because there's so many of them. Bro doesn't know what woman to get. There we go. He gets the right one. He's paying close attention. But now the tower is up, and the tower will be garrisoned, and there's no way that these scouts can fight it. So bro, he doesn't have stone to build many towers, so he has to commit to one. He really needs to stop Noboru from pushing to his farms, because he just built these. He needs the farms to make scouts. Now, I don't know if scouts are even going to save him here, but he needs his towers, my point. Now, what Noboru is known for doing is he'll garrison with five vills? Then send five more to batter this down with all the upgrades. His tower is is chewing up vills. Has killed two villagers. See, look at this. Garrisons, ungarrisons. And Bruh's thinking, hmm, I need to rush this down. Only Bruh, he's now underneath a tower here. His tower is going to get battered down quickly because of the vills. His repair vills are getting shot as he tries to repair. He will fail with the repairs. And Noboru has enough stone for another tower, guys. So who just build one? <laughs> like, it's it's no problem. <laughs> That's the second tower he's lost, but he's on the stone at home. Look at this eco. Four farmers, two lumberjacks, one on gold. I I'm not even sure what that was for. And more villagers have come forward. <laughs> 21 kills and 9 deaths. I think Bro did a pretty good job. In early feudal, he did a great job. And now he's making an archery range. Now he's going to gold. But he's lost too much of his map. He's lost too many villagers. He also can't depend on defensive towers. Because his stones are... Well, there's one stone. Where's the other? This one, he hasn't scouted. And we saw how the one defensive tower he built went anyway. So I guess Bro needs to leave this wood line because he's getting battered down. I, I think he, yeah, he's trying to wall these vills out. No proof runs into the TC fire. <laughs> he doesn't care. He doesn't care. Look at this. You ever see that honey badger video? Honey badger doesn't give up. That's what that vill, that guy's the honey badger. Oh, he's dead, but. Whatever. One archer for Bruh. A new tower for Nobru. Oh, he lost the tower. What a shame. I wonder what he'll do. Oh, he'll fight with villagers. His name is Nobru. Sorry, I just... I needed to be Dr. Seuss for a second. Um, he'll just build another one. Most likely. It, I would be very surprised if he did anything but fight with villagers and build towers. That is his M.O. Poor bra, man. <laughs> Poor bra, he's tried his best. That's all you can do in life is try your best. Oh my god, he's building the tower there. It's almost like that one spot was made for a tower. The best way to counter Noboru's strategy is, is not leave spaces between your farms, apparently. Uh, Noboru builds his tower, garrisons the tower, and this is where the game ends. And this is where Bro's evening just gets so much worse. There's a lot going on here and it is so effective. Repairs on the tower that's already up. Fighting with the villagers that aren't repairing. The tower will hit anything that's not at the base of it. So slowly but surely villagers are going down. 
Look at the repair bills. The repair bills have so much armor, they can comfortably repair this. This tower is not going down anytime soon. Bruh has his whole economy, except for these two farmers attacking this, and Noboru's keeping it up. Some bills are repairing, some bills are attacking. He, he probably hasn't looked at his base once in the last two minutes. Brill's down to 22 villagers, guys. 22 villagers. And the tower has less fire than ever, so bro figures, all right, let's send more in. Now, this is where you start to tilt. This is where you start to reconsider your life decisions. This is where bro's thinking, am I going to be in Legend video? Am I, am I going to be on YouTube? This is not how I imagined being on YouTube, Mom. I'm sorry. 18 vils for bro. No bruise, not done. Still repairing, still doing this. Still playing this crazy, crazy game. 42 kills and 14 deaths against a player who is 200 points better than him. Against a very high level player. <laughs> this is the stupidest way to sum up Noboru. But he's so good at it. He, he honestly is so good at it. He's been able to calculate when he needs to garrison, when he needs to reposition bills. <laughs> 46 kills and 14 deaths. And bruh says, OMG, 11, GG. <laughs> He's like, what just happened to me? What is my life? Uh, more vills were coming forward, by the way. No brew would have built a tower here uh, as if he needed it. He would have finished off the game, but... That is the legend of Noboru. That is what he does. He does it to everyone. People expect it. And obviously he doesn't beat everyone. People do get the better of him, but he's damn good at it. He was an 1800 player. A very good 1800 player. Before he started using this strategy. I think his highest rating is 2k1. So 300 points higher when he tries this strat. He's beat Project Belgium. He's beat plenty of 2K plus players. I need to get some top 10 players to play him. I really need some top 10 players to play him just to see what it's like. I mean, he might not win, but he won't deviate from his strategy. That's for sure. But we're going to make it happen. Now, you probably love the Legend of Noboru. It might be a mix. It's like the, it's like the anti fat slob, right? Fat slob walls up and people hate him for that. And then other people love him for that. Nobru goes forward with his villagers and towers and batters people's faces in, and people will love him and hate him for that. But um, you're familiar with him now, and you might be familiar with another legend called Huang. Huang has been doing the same thing for years. What he does is a YOLO Drush and Dark Age, followed by a Fast Castle and Tonight's in Siege. And he has his own distinct style, which is incredible, and very, very different than Nobru's strategy. Well, guess what? They played each other. And the game is quite possibly the best game I've seen this year. Which is saying a lot because there's been a lot of good games this year. Uh, one I just uploaded a few days ago, uh, being the Viper with his Obsidian Arrows. So, you have two options, guys. YouTube, I'm putting a poll in the video. You can get The Legend of Huang vs. The Legend of Nobru on the, the last day of this month. Or, uh, I can give you... Another legend video in the legend of Russ. Uh, Russ was the guy who played in the eight hour long game I uploaded to YouTube titled the large, the longest game of AOE2. So there's a poll, which I will leave in the video description for a, a couple days. I will choose the winner to upload. Both will be uploaded in time, but I hope you're looking forward for this because <laughs> I've just gotten lucky recently. There's been some amazing games to cast, and I just... Uh, 46 kills for Nobaru. One largest army. Uh, less food. Less wood. More stone, less gold. <laughs> That's the timeline. This is where he lost his eagle. The rest is all eco. <laughs> I think Brud did a great job. I really do, but it wasn't good enough for the legend of Nobaru. Anyways, that's it for me. I love you all. Thank you so much for supporting Age of Empires 2 and myself. I hope you're excited for the future of Age of Empires. I'll see you next time, guys.